Hey everyone, today's video takes place over the course of seven months from my first broadband light laser session all the way through to today, uh, which is three months after my last session. So I talk about the entire process and experience, some pros and cons, the results, and ultimately how I feel about it and what I would recommend you do differently. If you're new here, hello, I'm Kate. I mostly talk about makeup on this channel, but also the occasional skincare video, cocktail recipes, footage of my dog Thumper, anything really goes. So I hope you like this video and I hope you'll subscribe. Let's jump right in. I'm gonna be uh, documenting my entire journey with BBL laser treatments. Today is gonna be the first of three sessions. Um, each session is about $500, but the place I'm going to gives you a discount on the third session if you book that. So the reason why I wanted to do BBL laser in the first place is to treat two areas of concern. One is red spots, AKA broken capillaries. The second are brown spots, which is all my hyperpigmentation. I have a lot of broken capillaries. I have a cluster here, uh, here. I have a cluster here and here and all over my nose. And it's really starting to bother me because broken capillaries are under the skin, right? So when you touch a broken capillary, the skin is smooth, which means that it's really difficult for concealer to stick to. Um, I don't wear full coverage foundation, so it tends to show through whatever base I'm wearing. And because it's not textured at all, like a blemish where the concealer can really like hold on to a blemish, um, it just slides right off my face. So I find that I can constantly see my broken capillaries even when I'm wearing makeup and it's really frustrating. The only way to treat broken capillaries is through laser treatments. I don't think anything topical can do it. And then the second thing that the BBL laser treats uh, are brown spots, which is hyperpigmentation. What's most frustrating for me, like uh, that you can see in this before video is um, all of this hyperpigmentation right under my eyes that kind of forms the circle. You can see that uh, on my under eye circles, like the dark circles, there are no freckles, there's no sun damage. And so I find that if I'm not wearing makeup or even if I am wearing makeup, there is such a stark contrast between the color of this skin and then all of this sun damaged skin right here. And it, it kind of makes my concealer always look more stark and it, it, things just like don't seem right to me. I really would love to have a more even skin tone. You know, I'm 31 and I've never done any type of treatments. Um, I've never had Botox or fillers or lasers or I don't even get facials or anything like that. The sun damage really, really bothers me. So I'm really hoping that the lasers help and let's see how it goes. Okay, I just got back from my first BBL treatment. I'm gonna tell you everything involved with the process and what it was like. You can already see that hyperpigmentation, all that stuff is starting to get darker. The red is gonna get redder, the brown spots are gonna get darker, and they're gonna get textured and then fall off my face. So they told me not to pick at anything, to just let it all fall off on its own. And for a week straight, I can only use like hyaluronic acid and a moisturizer and then sunscreen during the daytime. So basically just no active ingredients. Um, keep it super, super simple, you know, super gentle. And then tomorrow I can wear makeup. Um, I'm already wearing sunscreen right now. They gave me sunscreen for the ride home and it was super fast. It only took an hour. So first of all, I have documented this entire journey in real time on my Instagram stories and I saved them to a highlight called BBL. So if you wanna see real time footage of like numbing cream on my face and all that kind of thing, go to my Instagram, check out the highlight called BBL laser and you can see all that footage. But here I'm gonna go into more of a deep dive of everything. Um, so basically what happens is you get there, they put numbing cream all over your face and you sit there for 30 minutes. My face is still pretty numb as hell, especially around my lips. Um, and that's great because you don't feel anything really when you have the laser done. Then after 30 minutes, they bring you into the room. They put a cooling gel on your face since it kind of feels like a sunburn after. So that cooling gel helps with that effect. Then you get started on the laser. They do three rounds of uh, laser on your face. The first round I was like, piece of cake, not a problem. Like I even told the derm, I was like, oh, it's kind of relaxing. And she was like, just wait, it's going to get like, it gets spicy. Uh, and she wasn't lying right after that. We started the second round. Um, but first with the, with the first round, they basically just go like in sections, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that kind of thing. 
and what the laser is like. If you've ever had laser hair removal, it's basically the exact same feeling. It's like a snap and with some light and a little bit of heat. Um, it wasn't painful at all. It's just a little bit uncomfortable and like a little bit surprising. So it's like snap, 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 like that kind of thing. And you just see light and you have goggles on and you like see the light and <laughs> see the light. Like it's, it's just a little hot and you, there's like a bright light and a little bit of like a snap. The second round, the spicy round, uh, I was definitely like, Ooh, you know, it's like, Ooh. And, uh, they gave me stress balls just as like a little bit of a distraction. Don't let that freak you out. It's just like nice to have that to like grip onto something. That second round is just a little bit uncomfortable. The third round, they bump up the laser intensity even more. And that is for the spot treatments. So you can probably already see where that was. Um, these red spots here and all of the broken capillaries here and then the really deep freckles. I would say she probably did about 10 spots for the third round, but it was totally fine. I mean, she asked if you need a break. I never needed a break. You know, it's just a little bit like, ooh, ooh, it, it's fine. Like, it's not painful. If you're worried about the pain, don't be. The numbing gel and the cooling gel really help with that. And, you know, if you need a break, you can tell them. And because it's just like one prick at a time, um, it's, it's really easy to just like, you know, take a break if you need it, but I didn't need a break and it was totally fine. So my BBL laser treatment was on Thursday. So it's two days later and I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update. Uh, I didn't check in yesterday cause there really wasn't anything to show. Um, the redness went away and I just looked like I had pretty normal skin, but now there's some stuff going on. My skin is starting to feel textured as if I have on like a face scrub. Uh, or like very small little coffee grounds, which is a super weird feeling. And with the laser treatment, any red spots you have are gonna get more red. Any brown spots you have are gonna get darker too. So I'm looking a little rough today, but that's okay, because I'm gonna take you along through the whole process, regardless of how I look. And what's interesting is that I'm starting to break out and have a lot of like red bumps and a lot of whiteheads in places where I don't normally break out, most notably all around my forehead. Um, all around my forehead, all around the tops of my cheeks, which is where they focus the laser treatment. And so what I've heard is that the heat from the laser can trap dead skin in uh, your pores. And then because I can't use any active ingredients like a chemical exfoliant or anything like that for a week, I just kind of have to let it do its thing. So not feeling so hot right now to be on camera, but that's okay. Let's talk about the brown spots and what's going on here. So hopefully if I get in a little bit, you can see that the brown spots are getting darker, especially right all right here. See all of that getting so dark and right here. And that's getting more red and more dark. Everything here. Um, some of my broken capillaries here, here. And here um, are all getting more red so everything is just uh, seemingly coming to the surface and then hopefully in a few days that's gonna just fall off and then in a month we'll do the next treatment and a month after that do the last treatment so I will check in with you when there is a change in my skin hello again just got back from my second session of the broadband light laser treatment uh, as you can see got some irritation um, I didn't see the results I wanted after the first session. You know, I saw a couple freckles around my forehead darken and fall off. I saw a couple broken capillaries fade, um, especially these right here are starting to fade. But honestly, I just did not see what I wanted to after the first session. And they said that's normal. They go really light on the first session just in case because they'd rather go lighter and have no issues then burn a patient's face if they can't handle it very well so this time before my session i called them and said i really wasn't seeing the results i wanted can we increase the intensity they said yes absolutely so we really focused on this area under my eyes you can see this hyperpigmentation getting darker and right here as well uh, we focus on some broken capillaries around my nose right here you can see um, especially these broken capillaries that i pointed out and all of my sun damage on my forehead and these brown spots as well. So I'm gonna get up close so you can see what we're working with. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so that's it. Basically, um, I'm going to visit my parents in Florida in three weeks and they said you probably shouldn't have another laser session until a month after your trip. Um, I told them that like when I go to the beach or the pool, I wear this huge sun visor. I layer on my sunscreen super thick, um, you know, SPF 50 and I reapply and they said that's not good enough. You know, when you're out in the sun, you're still getting sun exposure even if you're not in direct sunlight. So they said there's a risk of burning if you have a laser session right after sun exposure. So just to be on the safe side, even though I'm gonna be extremely careful, I booked my laser session for four weeks after I get back from Florida. So it's gonna extend uh, this video a little bit, but hopefully it means that I will uh, be safe. Good morning, friends. I just woke up, if you can't tell, and I just wanted to show you what's happening on my face the morning after my second broadband light laser session. You can see all of this pigment really starting to darken. Also around here where we focus the laser, um, especially on the right side of my forehead. All around here, this brown spot, and I also noticed that a couple of my broken capillaries here, here, and here are already fading. Now, another side effect of the laser is the heat from the laser can actually block pores. So for the week after your laser session, you can have a little bit of an increase in uh, you know, acne or some whiteheads, and I'm having that right here on my nose, which is what happened to me last time. I definitely got some whiteheads. And also because you can't use actives for a week, it's a little bit more difficult to treat those spots, but it is what it is. It's just a few days of, of some whiteheads. It's not a big deal, hopefully for long-term evenness of my skin tone. So just wanted to show you what it looks like, but that burning, that redness is already gone. No irritation, nothing. So super easy. And I do have a bunch of client meetings today at work but you're able to wear makeup like as soon as you leave the office. So I can just cover whatever I need to cover with makeup. Um, and as long as you're wearing, you know, really good sunscreen and you're wearing hats outside, you can live a pretty normal life. So that's it. I'll see you next time. All right, it's time for another BBL update. This is the day after my third session and my derm increased the intensity. It's the highest intensity that she had used on me thus far. So I wanted to show you what the uh you know next day pigmentation looks like really not so bad the redness is gone and really it's just this darkening here and all of that is going to mostly drop off sorry about my nails it is what it is but i wanted to check in because this time i have some more uh critical feedback some more negative feedback this third session is being done in august and all of my other sessions were done in april and may and the reason for that lapse in time between the sessions is Nobody told me that if I went on vacation, despite being super careful about sun protection, that all of my sun damage could come back. So what ended up happening is after my second BBL session, I went to Florida in June to visit my parents. I hadn't seen them in two years and I wore big hats everywhere. I only sat in the shade. I reapplied my sunscreen several times a day, but it didn't matter. The rays in Florida in the summertime were so strong, especially being on the beach. My derm said that the sand can just reflect the light. And I had no idea, but all of my sun damage here and here came back, almost all of it. I still felt like my skin was better than before the first two sessions, but I was really disappointed because I had just spent a thousand dollars on that laser and I thought that if I was just really careful about sun exposure, that I would be fine. But it turns out it does not matter. Like if you're sitting in a car and there's sun on your face, like that can cause sun damage. So I was pretty pissed that no one gave me a heads up on that. I felt like that's something that everyone should talk about. And now they told me like, oh yeah, you, you shouldn't ever do your lasers right before summer or like right before a beach vacation. That's why fall is laser season. And I was like, could have given me a heads up, that would have been nice. But regardless of that whole thing and basically the money wasted, um, I was pretty annoyed that they didn't tell me about those risks. So I kind of haggled with them for a discount because the problem is I just don't feel like I've made enough progress on the sun damage. So they said that maybe my sun damage is too subtle for the BBL laser and I might need a more intense laser, which is the halo laser. The problem is the halo laser only picks up on brown spots and I was doing BBL to treat both brown spots and broken capillaries. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I still, uh oh, 
lighting. Basically, I just felt like I had a pretty substantial amount of broken capillaries left on my face, which meant that I needed to finish the BBL sessions. But now I also have to get Halo and I kind of felt like they were upselling me and didn't tell me that this that I potentially wasn't a candidate for BBL. So I was pretty frustrated about it. And basically they gave me the standard uh, three package discount on my third BBL session. And then they gave me like a $300 discount on the Halo laser. The Halo laser, you only have to do once and it's $1,600, so it's more expensive than all three of the BBL sessions combined. I know that they can't guarantee that every procedure is gonna work for everyone. I just don't feel like there was great transparency from the dermatologist I went to. Hopefully I'll start seeing the results I want, but I did just wanna check in and share that I have not been super pleased so far, uh, but if all of this drops off, I will be really excited and then I have my Halo session a month from now. So I'm just gonna bundle that experience into this as well. Um, so I'll check in once all of this has healed before my Halo session. Adios. Okay, today is the final check-in where I'll be sharing my final thoughts and any advice I have to people who are interested in getting broadband light laser treatments. It's been about seven months since my first treatment and three months since my last treatment. So I just wanted you to see what my skin looked like when it wasn't in the recovery phase. This was not an entirely positive experience for me and I'll get into why, but first, Let's do a close up on my skin and we can talk about some of the pros and cons that I see. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to tell if you compare this shot to the beginning of the video before I had any BBL sessions that my skin looks a lot more even. My face is not as dark compared to my neck because my, my skin just always looked darker on my face because of all of that hyperpigmentation. So it does look a lot more even. I think you can see under my eyes, the color there is not quite as starkly different to the tops of my cheekbones. That definitely evened out a little bit. And my forehead, you know, I still have these patches all over my forehead, but there is a bit of an improvement there. In terms of the brown spots, I did not see the results that I wanted or I thought that I was gonna get but also no one prepared me for what to expect. There were no expectations. They just said, okay, we see your skin. This is the laser we suggest, let's book it. And so I really didn't feel like there was much transparency with the dermatologist that I visited. Maybe if they had told me what to expect, I would have had different expectations that weren't so dramatic. So I'm happy with the results and seeing the brown spots fade, but I just don't feel that they faded enough for what I was expecting. The other thing I wanted to treat were broken capillaries. And that's where I am particularly frustrated because they did fade after three sessions, but they're still there. Um, this cluster all along my left cheek that I talked about previously is still all here. You can see all of these broken capillaries. I still have this one here, didn't fade. All of the ones in my nose, still there. So this side of my nose, cheeks. Um, so I'm really disappointed when it comes to the broken capillaries. I really wanted those to disappear because they're so hard to treat. You can only treat them with lasers. Ultimately, not a huge deal. I do think that the brown spots fading are what makes the biggest difference on my face. So I'm happy with that. But I was expecting my face to look a little bit more even. You know, when I look at myself in the viewfinder, I just, I still see all of this here. You can see all of this hyperpigmentation up the top of my cheek, all of the freckles still along my forehead. You know, all of this really darkened in all of those sessions, but it never fully went away. And so what I had shared with my dermatologist on the phone was that all of the stuff that I'm saying to you, I was unhappy with the results. I called them after every single session and said, hey, I saw all of the spots darken, but they didn't totally disappear. And... After the second session, they recommended Halo Laser to me. Each session I had, I saw a different dermatologist who did the treatment. And the last one was the one that I really liked. And she said, hey, you and I have really similar skin tones. We're both super Irish. We freckle really easily. She said, you're gonna love the Halo Laser. It's intense though. It There's downtime. You like can't leave your house for a week. 
She said her face exploded. She was so swollen. She looked like a chipmunk. Apparently you can't wear makeup for a month. So as a YouTuber, it's really difficult. And I'm just feeling a little bit frustrated because I feel like if I had met with her originally, she would have looked at my skin and said, no, you're not a great fit for BBL. You should do Halo. I just really felt that the place I went to did not give me the transparency or the care that I wanted. The first time I went there for my free consultation, there were some red flags. The person I met with who kind of assessed my skin said I needed to buy all these SkinCeuticals products. And if you are a skincare person like me, you know that skin SkinCeuticals is really expensive. So I asked her and I said, okay, why do you recommend these products to me? Those are expensive. And I think they have pretty similar ingredients to comparable products from CeraVe. She could not tell me why she recommended those products. It She literally looked at this eye cream for two minutes to figure out what ingredients would help me. So that was the red flag number one, which is why I wanted to share this advice for you guys. If you're interested in BBL sessions, make sure that you really like the people who are treating you in terms of them listening to you. Ask as many questions as you can. If you get any spidey senses telling you that they're not listening or they don't care, I would suggest going to someone else because I kind of wish that I had done that. If I had known that I was a good candidate for Halo from the start, then obviously I wouldn't have had to spend $1,200 on broadband light sessions. And I just feel like if there had been maybe a disclaimer with my dermatologists and with the people who were looking at my skin to manage my expectations, then that could have changed everything. Like if they had said, hey, we think your sun damage might be a little too subtle for BBL, but let's just see how it goes. Then maybe we can switch you to Halo. I would have had different experiences and a different expectation. But now after three sessions, now them recommending a stronger, more expensive laser, that's $1,600 for one session. It just makes me feel like they're pushing things on me without really taking the time to get to know me. So my biggest piece of advice is to really make sure that you're a great candidate and to ask questions, make sure that your dermatologists or providers are listening to you and especially don't go on any vacations during the few months of your treatment. If you remember earlier in the video, I went to Florida in June to visit my parents and all of the sun damage came back from after my first two sessions. And I was really upset about that because no one told me that could happen, even if I'm wearing sunscreen and a big hat. I have another trip to Florida to visit my parents for Christmas. It's now December, 2021. And then I'm going to Miami for my birthday in February. So right now I have my halo laser appointment scheduled for January. I think I'm gonna push it to the end of February because I don't want my trips to Florida to mess up any of the progress with my skin, even though I'm in the shade the whole time, I'm super careful about sun exposure and reapplying sunscreen. Another thing that really bothered me is that my providers never told me that I shouldn't do my lasers in the summertime. And since talking with a few of my friends who are estheticians, they were all like, yeah, don't do your lasers in the summertime. You know, you wanna wait until fall when you're not getting as much sun exposure, when your skin can like really get all the benefits from the laser. And I just wish that my dermatologist office had suggested that because I, it was summertime, I went to Florida, all these things, like it just, I just wish I had known that it wasn't the best time. So ultimately, I'm somewhat happy with the results of BBL. I can tell my skin's more even. Some of my broken capillaries have faded, and I do feel like I don't have to wear foundation. I really just prefer a little bit of concealer and I'm good to go. But I just feel that my experience with the dermatologist's office was negative because they didn't manage my expectations. They weren't very transparent. I felt like they were just pushing things on me without really understanding me and they didn't really listen to me. Luckily, I was able to get them to give me a discount on the Halo laser, so it's normally $1,600. They're giving it to me for $1,300, but that doesn't solve the problem that my broken capillaries are still here, and that's really frustrating. So I might call back and ask if they can do another BBL session to help with the broken capillaries before doing the Halo. I'm not sure. So I'm gonna end this video here rather than dragging it out until the results of the halo laser, which I might not even be able to do until March. But this is what my skin looks like after three sessions of BBL. Relatively happy with it. I am excited to explore the halo laser and potentially other treatments. I would much rather have less skincare products in my routine, buy less skincare, and just have such a simplified routine of just like hydrators, skin soothers, retinoid, and sunscreen, 
rather than all of the different like chemical exfoliants and hyperpigmentation products. I just want to simplify my routine and then add in some skincare treatments like lasers or chemical peels or microneedling because those give me such better results than skincare products. So I just really felt like I maxed out what, what topical products could do. And now I'm excited to explore more treatments, explore more lasers and things like that. If you have any questions about my experience with BBL, let me know in the comment section below. I will answer whatever I can and check back in in a few months for the results of my halo laser. Really, really hope that that helps to fade everything around the perimeter of my face. They said that my hyperpigmentation is more subtle and the halo laser is so intense. It can pick up on that better. So we'll see how that goes. TBD if I get another fourth BBL session for the broken capillaries, but hopefully this was a good overview that was helpful and you can understand some of the pros and cons and you know, some things to be aware of. If you like this video, I hope you'll subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.